Welcome to Sharing Your Vision. Today we have a very special guest via Skype from Los Angeles, California. She's Angela White, and she is just a wonderful human being. I know she's going to enlighten you today with all the information she has to share with us. She's a film producer, and I can't wait to introduce her to all of you. Welcome, Angela. How are you? Hello, Elaine. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here and sharing your vision. We will be sharing a lot of your vision in the film industry. And I wanted to know how important it is to support uh, face-based movies in Hollywood. Oh, it's extremely important. It's, uh, it's one of those niche that is not supported because we're so anti-Christ now in Hollywood, and, and that's just the reality. Uh, people don't like to mix God and anything, and so we're the outsiders who have to kind of fight to get on the inside. And the reason why it's important is because this is the best way, to me, best platform to reach a broad audience to spread the word of Jesus Christ. So I gotta get inside to try to infect it to reach people. And so that's why it's really important us Christians support each other on this journey. And I tell, I can tell at this moment that there's a lot of people that are faith-based. How important is that in life in general? Yeah, I think it's very important. I think without faith, people have nothing. Uh, nowadays, people are struggling, whether it's financially, spiritually, emotionally. So all they have is their faith. They have to believe in something, something they can't see. And that is what faith is, is knowing that the outcome is going to work towards your good. And so it's really important. Even in my journey, I get doors closed on me every day. Uh, somebody says no at least once a week. I have to keep going because I know God has ordered my steps. I know my destiny. I know my purpose. And I have to keep moving towards that direction. And faith is all I have. How important it is to share that message in film? Very important to share it because so many people need it. But when you add the word Christian to it, it turns off a lot of people. People don't like to be labeled. So I have to pepper it in film in a way that's entertaining and people still understand it and not feel like they're being labeled. Everybody can't receive everything right away. You got to give it to them in drops. How is it uh, the, the experience as a whole when you connect with those artists that are going to play certain roles within the film? Yeah, it's really important, especially for faith-based films, because, Elaine, I've done a little bit of all films in Hollywood before I started doing faith-based. It's, it's very important that actor has to be open to playing a Christian, open to playing that type of role. To play a Christian on screen, you have to be vulnerable. There can't be fakeness to it. It has to be truthful. So it's not a difficult, it's not an easy role to play. So we have to handpick our actors who are willing to go there. And a lot of times they are Christians because it's easier for them to act that way because that's the way they live their life already. When you talk about the power of forgiveness, especially in film, how do you project that? And also how does it affect in, in real life? Yeah, the power of forgiveness was really important in the question of faith because it's something that many people have issues with, including myself. It's, it's something that we say we forgive, and a lot of times we don't. We might forgive temporarily, but if they upset us again, we bring it back up. It, it, it comes up in marriages, it comes up in relationships, it comes up with your children. And so this is something that we really have to understand that once we forgive, we're letting go for ourselves. It's not about forgiving the person, it's about allowing yourself to be released from it, released from it. And that, that's powerful. And to be able to not hold on to it. And that's one of the principles that Jesus wanted us to, to understand. And it's the, one of the hardest principles though to receive. If somebody killed your child or if somebody harmed your child, are you able to really forgive them? Those are those tough questions. Um, how difficult is it in today's day 2019 to be able to talk about that topic because it's so controversial and we see it in the news uh, we see the different um sides uh, if you, of the aisle if you will and there's just so much about it and what bothers me is that they make it something that it's really not they kind of condense it 
they kind of uh, put it in a place where it just complicates it more. Yeah, racism is really important for me to, to start tackling. I haven't started tackling that yet in movies. And A Question of Faith is the first time I tackled it, in a subtle way. Because a lot of times people are more alike than them we are different. But people don't really realize that from upbringing, from stereotypes. And until we start seeing ourselves as one, it's never going to be fixed to me. We, we have to see each other as human first and learn to work together. And right now, unfortunately, this country is so divided that uh, we're going to have to all do our part. So now I have to do my part. I have to speak about it in film. Film is my way of talking about my agenda, my platform. So if I have to show it in a subtle way, then I'd rather show it in a subtle way so people can understand behavior, habits, things that we need to break. We need to stop prejudging people before we know anything about them. We need to stop assuming things on any ethnic group. We just need to stop it completely. Angela, is there a topic that you have yet even considered to tackle because of all the things that you go through when making a film? Yeah, I'm open to tackling any topic. My next faith-based film is going to tackle another very difficult topic. We're going to deal with alcoholism and autism. So I'm open to tackling any topic of education, anything to help make people aware of conditions or problems. I'm a filmmaker. I like to explore anything. I like to tell stories, and there's so many stories to tell. So I'm open to any topic, Elaine. Anything that's a good story. That's wonderful because there's no limitation in the Lord. And I think yeah. it's important to share God's word and God's in good intention of all things. To be yes. able to generate goodness of in, within people. Yes, absolutely. And if we're like Jesus, we go out to the masses. We don't stay hidden behind closed doors, whether it's your church, Whatever it is for you, you have to go to the masses. And once you go to the masses, you're going to see that as Christians, we deal with everything. There's no topic or no issue that we don't face as well. So we need to address it. We need to talk about it. It's the way we can help other people. So the people know they're not alone, whether it's mental illness, whether it's any type of addiction, we need to address it because it's, it's happening in the church, outside the church, it's everywhere. We need to stop putting things under a rug. We need to start not exposing it for sensationalism. We need to talk about it so people can find some help. Tell me a little bit about you. I know you have a lot of education. Does that help you today to achieve this level of film producing? It does. I, I'm, I'm big, I have a book coming out in the next month, and I talk about education, how important it is to me. It does. I have my bachelor's, my master's, and my JD, and I feel like education gives you discipline, and structure. And then you also learn how to educate yourself once you're out of school. So before I tackle a topic, I research the topic. I understand how to look at the topic a little bit differently than maybe other people have done. I think education is very important. It's, it's important for us to know what we're talking about. Uh, the worst thing you see even with journalism is people talking about something. They haven't even done any research about it. Uh, they never even spoken to anybody who's dealt with it. Uh, so, yes, education is a big importance and component in my life. And without it, I wouldn't have had the structure that I needed to face a lot of the issues I deal with on my daily job. And then at the same time, I'm comfortable knowing I can always get a job if I need it. <laughs> you have another platform which is very interesting and is as a speaker. Does that help you as well to connect with people and to be able to see what is out there in need that people should be educated on and bring it onto film, but also be able to discuss it with them? Yes, my uh, motivational speaking really doesn't have anything to do with the film world of me. It's, it's a separate component, that and my books. Is, uh, I have a whole, almost like I've separated myself. But for motivational speaking, it's for empowerment of other people. It's for people who think they can't, that they can. It's for the person who thinks, I don't have any money, how can I make any dream come true? I don't come from money. I don't come from a silver spoon in my mouth. I do not have nepotism as far as in the companies to get ahead. I feel I'm pretty self-made. And I think that's what people want to identify with. Can you do this on your own, on your own in the sense of without having the resources that people think you need? You know, I had a praying mother and that's what I needed. <laughs> 
to go out there and seek my journey. And so that's what my platform is on speaking. It's for anybody. <clears throat> it's not religious based. It's just for the person that feels they need some opportunities and resources and don't know how to get their life going. Amen. Can you talk about paying it forward and giving yeah. back? Paying for is huge. I wouldn't be where I am right now without so many people making sacrifices, giving me the resources. So I started an online school last year called Backstage Pass to the movie industry. It's for anybody who wants to have access to Hollywood without being in Hollywood. And I feel this is time for me to educate others on everything I've learned in over 20 years. I've been in this business over 20 years. It's time for me to give out all my information, all the secrets, because we need more people in the industry who don't look like us, but also we need more people in the industry who are from all over the country, who don't have access. Because it's more, it's more fun when you have different people talking about topics. It's more fun to have more people putting out movies. So I started that. I really believe that you have to pay it forward in life. I feel that if you've been blessed, you need to bless somebody else. This is biblical. You've got to bless somebody else. And that's how you really get to your true blessing. You really see the difference when you help other people. Blessings for you start coming from nowhere. Amen. Really important to me. And it's not really about us. It's about what we give to others. And yes. yes. <laughs> that's what I enjoy the most is what others receive from us because the Lord is the one that fulfills us. And by grace we receive, by grace we give. Yes. When it's did you, amen to that. When did you start to love uh, making films and expressing all those things that the, the world needs to know when it comes from God? Yeah, my first film was in 2001, but I wasn't a full-time filmmaker then. I really didn't know what I was doing. So it wasn't until about 2009, 2010, when I said, okay, I'm going to attempt to make this a full-time career. And it's a process to fall in love with it. So probably about 2012 was when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this full-time. I like doing this. It's a lot of hard work. It's hard to tell stories. Uh, you're working with a lot of different personalities to make a film. It takes a long time. Uh, but then I realized the impact it has on other people. Even Elaine, the film you've seen, A Question of Faith, I have relationships with people all over the world, over this film. It just premiered in London, January 24th. I was just in Amsterdam with it in November. Uh, it's in South Africa, it's all over the world. So I can be more impactful through TV or film than I ever could just in my hometown. And once I realized the power of that, I felt that I had a responsibility to use it wisely and really spread positive family-oriented platform messages family oriented it doesn't always have to be christian based but i still do family content so the whole family can watch it together can you give us an insight of the process of filmmaking and where is your state of mind do you maintain yourself connected to the project at all times or there's a period of time where you need to disconnect to oversee yeah, for me, I have to be connected because I am the lead producer. I'm the production company. So I'm the one responsible for raising the financing. I'm responsible for all the actors and crew on set. If somebody gets hurt, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for selling the film, which is distribution. I'm responsible for marketing the film. So I can never disconnect until the film is finished. And finished means it's out there, it's in the marketplace, it's selling. I can go on to the next project. Uh, yes, for I tell people all the time, when you're in charge and you the lead, want to be the leader and you want to be the head of the company, you, don't, you can't disconnect. You are responsible at all times, and, and that's the role I've, I've taken. And I like that role because I know everything going on with the project. There's nothing that's going on that I don't know about on my films. No. Do you find anything difficult within the process than others? Yes. So the most difficult process for most independent filmmakers is raising the finance. Uh, we uh, have a hard time of finding people to financially back us. And so that has been the problem for years. It's still a problem. It's a problem to educate people about financing, film financing, for them understanding it's like buying a house. It's, it's real estate. Uh, if you own a film, you're making money on it forever. So when you see Star Wars, uh, understand that George Lucas is making money on that forever. When he passes away, it's going to go to his whoever he leaves it to. It's a piece of property, intellectual property that you own. Ownership is key for wealth. Ownership is key for growth. Ownership is key for making any changes in your life. 
So I'm particularly, I'm trying to really preach and teach people, you need to get into this industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And a lot of people have no idea, no idea how much money is in film and TV and how this could be a way that you can create generational wealth for your family. Uh, a lot of times we work for companies, but we realized we weren't making any money. And at the same time, we had no ownership or control over the content being told. If you want to tell your own stories, you have to put money into it and push it out there. Just like you, Elaine, have this TV show. I bet you've had to put a lot of sweat equity into this TV program to make it happen. But guess what? The bright side is you, you probably own it or one of the owners. And there's a pride in that saying, hey, I made this content and now I can pass it on to my family. So for us, the hard part is getting investors, understanding how important it is for people to understand this is an industry that is not looked at as an investment and it's a great one. Look at Black Panther, it just made over a billion dollars in like six months. It's just crazy, uh, the type of opportunities that are here. But um, that's, that's our most difficult part. Once we have the financing, we take off like a rocket. Wow, that's awesome. I love it. Because that's one of the things that we want to get involved with along the way. And it's to create series and, yes. and, and storytelling, uh, which is important. I think that God fulfills us with so much knowledge. And then we see the world from a different view. And we want to share that. Absolutely. It's, it's so important. And then you can also control the, the narrative. A lot of times people tell us our narrative, but never walks in our shoes. You can control your narrative. You control the content that you want your children to see. You control the content you want your community to see. It's so important that people get into this industry. If you don't like what you see on TV, you have to get involved to make a change. I mean, so many people say, oh, I can't stand TV. I, I don't even turn it on. Well, get involved and then you'll start seeing some content that you enjoy. That, that's how you change the process. And today is so much easier with uh, social media. Absolutely. Even online, Elaine, with YouTube. I know people created their own TV show just on YouTube with a few thousand dollars. And now it's building viewership. They're starting to get advertising from sponsors. It's You can control your own destiny, even on Facebook, uh, Apple. There's so many platforms now that anybody can get into. You can shoot a film on your iPhone. You can shoot a TV show on your iPhone there and then just upload it to YouTube on your channel. There's so many ways to get involved. You don't need as much money as you think uh, to build a build a brand, to build momentum, to build a following. But is it important, Angela, to have a good focus on what you're actually sharing with people? I think you should have at least your brand identified. I think people need to know what type of content am I going to see coming to your channel? I think you have to be somewhat focused on the content. Now, the genre can be different genres. You can go to action one day and then go family and, and go someplace else just because you also have to test your audience. Uh, I, it's very hard for me to figure out audiences still. Uh, people's moods change by the country. The climate in the country sometimes dictates what people want to see. Uh, sometimes when the country's going well, there might not be as in, interesting and inspirational because they were doing well. They might want to just be entertained and see an action film. So a lot of times you also have to give your audience what they want to see and put your message within that. That's important because you should do your study. You should do your homework yes. uh, if you really want to be successful in actually taking information in in order to share it. Yes. I, you, you, hit it on the, you hit it on the head, uh, Elaine. A lot of times you have to research your audience and then your audience changes. You know, as we age, we change. As things happen in our personal life, we change in our thoughts. So you have to kind of change with the audience too sometimes. Is there ever any fear when you encounter a new project? Is there any oh, fear yeah. at all? Yeah, it's not, I, I wouldn't call it fear more so than caution uh, to make sure that I'm telling the right story uh, to make sure I'm a good leader. I, I am responsible for so many people, 50 people at minimum a day when I do a movie. And everybody's not the same. We're, we're not monolithic. And so what I have to do with one person is different with another person. The way I speak to one person, I can't speak to another person. A lot of personalities to manage. And it's very hard to be a leader. I didn't realize that it looks easy when you are underneath somebody 
I was like, oh, I could do this, no problem. And the first time I had a lead, I failed. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand the psychology of people. Because le true leadership is knowing how to work with people, to me. And I didn't understand that. And if you don't have people willing to follow you, you're not leading anybody. <laughs> so, so you have to really understand people. And even to this day, I'm still reading books on how to become a better leader because it's very difficult. People have their own lives, their own ideas, and everybody wants to be a leader. And so you have to be able to relate to people and their experiences, even if you haven't walked in their shoes. Wow, that's amazing. Those are powerful words, and they are so true. Can you share with us a testimony of your faith where you endured a trial and obviously you came out triumphantly because that's what God does with us. <laughs> we do fail oh. trials and tribulations, but we do come out triumphantly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I didn't know anybody and I was a talent manager and uh, five, five years of being in Los Angeles, me and my last client parted ways. And a lot of people said, you just have to move back to New Jersey. Uh, you don't have any resources. You don't have any money. And I said, nope, God told me to stay here. I didn't go to film school. So I'm not a traditional producer in a sense of a film school experience. And I just kept hitting the streets. I got a part-time job. Uh, even my family at one point was like, do you want to come home for a while? And I said, no, because if I come home, I'm probably never going to come back. And it took two years to get on my feet before opportunities and doors started opening up where I was able to survive in Los Angeles, make a living. I never became homeless, thank God, because that is a lot of people's story here. They do become homeless. I never became homeless. And go back to the education. I can always get a job. <laughs> so the education played a role because I would always get a good job while I pursued my dream at night. And one thing led to another where I was able to become functional. It took about two years. And it was a big testimony because so many people, even your close family sometimes doesn't see the vision. And they just feel like, hey, just come home, get yourself back on your feet. But you have to have the passion within and the perseverance to keep going through it. And I tell people, again, I don't come from any silver spoon. I um, have probably the same car I've had for 10 years now. I got to keep humble in some aspects of my life because that's the only way I can keep going forward. You never know when something will change financially and you have nothing. And so that was my testimony. I was able to get back on my feet. It took about two years, but it was against everybody thinking that I was able to make it. Everybody thought I need to go home for a while. A question of faith. <laughs> yes, it is faith because, hey, I tell people to be in this industry of entertainment, even you, you're in entertainment. You having a TV show, you, this is entertainment. You have to be a little crazy because this is one of the most difficult industries to get into. People don't have the vision. When you tell people you want to do entertainment, they think you're crazy. They think it's Sodom and Gomorrah. They just think it's the devil's work. My father used to always say, Hollywood's the devil's playground. But you have to kind of be in the playground if you're going to infect it and make change with it. You can't infect it from home. You got to get inside and work from the inside out. So I'm happy to be here working it out uh, and still be able to be here for 18 years without really a tr traditional steady income. Uh, we only make money from film to film. So guess what? If I'm not making a film, I'm not making any money, Elaine. It's just like an actor. If they're not booked on a show or a TV show or a movie, they're not making any money. People really have to understand that. Nobody's making money 24-7 in this industry except for the studios and networks, that people that own it. But everybody else is kind of living project to project, which is check to check. That is not comfortable for most people. So you really have to have a whole bunch of faith to be in this industry. I agree with you. It's very tough. If you don't have the vision, and like you said before, the passion, and yes. willing and able uh, to get in there and being part of this whole encore, then obviously you won't, you won't get anywhere. No, no. And you really got to know yourself. You got to know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. You might have to walk away from things, even if they look good. Uh, that, that's when you have to really know yourself. When, you, when you're in a certain age range, maybe the early 20s, you're not gonna know that yet. But the older you get, you start understanding everything that appears good is not good. And sometimes it's better to say no. I agree, I agree. I've had to say no too. <laughs> okay. yeah. It's the 
know, life lessons, but it takes a while to learn it. To me, it took me a while to learn that. Yes,、uh, to me, the passion that I have for my Lord just oversees and overcomes all those other、uh, types of,、uh, I don't know,、uh, uh, options that they offer you and things of that、yes. nature. It just doesn't work with me. I <laughs>、yes. understand, yes.、Yeah. You can't be bought. Basically, you can't be bought. No, as long as it's a good message and it's something that it's definitely going to edify people, then th that's a good thing. But、yes. nothing that's going to destroy the goodness of, that we all carry inside. That's、yes. what we need to、uh, give life to. Yes. yes. Well, thank God for your program and thank God for you that you're able to push、uh, God's message out there.、Uh, we need more disciples. Of Jesus Christ pushing messages out there. It's, it's, it's rare. It's not a lot of people like people think.、Uh, there's a lot of closeted Christians who are in the industry but won't tell anybody they're Christian. So、uh, it's, it's very rare you find people who are proud about it. Yes, that's true. And I'm so proud of you too. I'm、oh, so blessed to have you here with us and that you're part of this family now. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your beautiful program, Sharing Your Vision. It's a beautiful program, it's needed. Uh, I'm, I wish you, and I know God is going to just take this right out there to the atmosphere. Thank you so much, and I really、oh. appreciate this time. And I would like for you to share a message a message of hope and a message that can、uh, just go into people's hearts and generate that force, that energy that the Lord gives us to go ahead and conquer our dreams. Yeah, my message would be that you are the message. You are the message. We're so busy telling other people's message. Understand who you are. Push yourself out there. People buy into people. Understand that. People buy into people. If you have such a beautiful message, you're going to have outpouring of people wanting to support your dreams, wanting to finance your dreams. Wanting to push your dreams further. I met Elaine almost a year ago and she remembered me and just contacted me after a year later. So it's important to understand that you're the walking message. You have to get yourself right to accomplish your dreams. Whatever internal issues you have, you have to fix them. And we constantly have to work on our internal issues. Once you get yourself in a positive place and really speak loud and proudly of who you are. God will open up so many opportunities that you can't pay for anyway. He'll open up all the doors that said no. He'll make all the haters now become your supporters. He will elevate you like an elevator to the top without any buttons to push. And that's the power of it. It's the power, but you got to know yourself. So I would stress to people find yourself, understand it, be comfortable with it, and speak boldly and loudly to the world. And watch people follow you. Amen to that powerful message. Awesome. Angela,、oh. where can we contact you? Yeah, people can find me. My website is www.missmsangelawhite.com. I'm on social media Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at missmsangelawhite. So everything, I'm not married yet, Elaine. So everything is missed right now msangelawhite.com and msangelawhite. People can contact me. I have an open platform on social media. I have multiple platforms there, and I'm always speaking to people. I love to even be invited if you want me to speak at your school、um, or your church or any type of events. Again, I want to be a woman of force, woman of force of nature who's there to empower others, others that to know they can live their dreams, others to know you don't have to come from a rich family to be successful. Anything that you thought, remove it from your mind. Everything is available to you. And there are people out there looking for you just as much as you're looking for them. Awesome. That's great, Angela. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And I know that you're still、um, promoting a question of faith. Somewhat, somewhat. We, we, the film's been out now. It's on Netflix. So people can see it on Netflix. The website is a question of faith film.com.、Uh, we were out in theaters a year and a half ago. We're available at Walmart, Amazon for purchase, Barnes and Noble, Best Buy. And now we're on Netflix. So we're still always telling people about it. But right now, I'm getting ready to start my new journey with my new faith based film. I'm seeking investors. If anybody's interested, they can contact me. Seeking a new group of pastors, leaders to get involved from the early stages so we can push a whole new message. Because let me tell you, 
Uh, we get out to the churches. They want to hear our messages. They want to be inspired. They want to be uplifted. They want to see the word of Jesus Christ on screen. But I need more Christians to support me to help make this happen. Well, you got us. We're going to support you. We are very inspired by your journey and by your purpose in life. You are so blessed. And thank you for blessing us. Oh, thank you for having me, Elaine. I really appreciate you. God bless you, your entire team. I pray for nothing but blessings immensely to you, your family. I remember meeting your beautiful daughter and your husband. And I just want to thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, Angela, for those wonderful words. And I share the same. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of what you do. And I thank the Lord for your life. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for uh, spending this wonderful time with us. Uh, I really had a great time. There's just so much information to help us reach our goals and, and just to look forward and never back and always be an achiever. There's just so much for us to do in this world and the purpose that God has given us and the talents and all the things that God fills us with every day. It encourages us to go on and spread the message of Christ. I love you and I'll see you on the next edition of Sharing Your Vision.